Good morning. On this Saturday, October 12th, uh, we're going to look at Isaiah 41, 42, and 43, uh, taking one of the book, one of the chapters of tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, uh, we have worship, and it'll be Facebook Live at 9 o'clock at Mabel in Sutton. And there is no worship at our Saviors in McHenry because uh, Sutton is having their annual soup sandwich and pie from 11 to 1. And so Cheryl and I will be helping with that. And um, So no no worship at our Saviors in McHenry tomorrow, but uh, we'll be on regular time here um, with worship live. It'll be, a, you know, I mean, worship is always a little bit on the short side, but it, it'll be about, an, it'll be a normal worship service anyway. In Isaiah 41, uh, God is speaking to Israel, and he says, listen to me in silence, you know, and, and, and who has roused the victor, verse 2, and, you know, he makes them like dust, he driven the stubble, and who has performed and done this? I, the Lord, he says in verse 4, I, the Lord, I am first and I will be last. The coastlands have seen, and, and and as he goes on talking through here, then he's, he's talking about the restoration of, of Israel, uh, that the restoration is coming. Verse 8, But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth, I called you, I have chosen you, do not fear, I am with you. And that, you know, do not fear, in verse 10, I am with you. Do not be afraid, in, again in verse 10. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. You know, so, I mean, out of all of the times we have that do not fear or have no fear or do not be afraid or be not afraid, here we have it definitely, you know, that he's speaking to the Israelites, promising the restoration. He's going to call them back from the ends of the earth where the where they've been scattered because of the the conquering of the of the of, of the land of Israel and you know the northern Israel and Judah they, they've been conquered and the, the people have have scattered you know they've been driven out of their homeland um, but you know that the end of verse ten I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my right hand and you know with my victorious right hand I don't I shouldn't leave off that victorious word because God is going to come in. And, and take care of Israel again. And then in verse 11, he says, all who have sinned against you, uh, you know, or all who are in, in, incensed against you, shall be ashamed and disgraced. Those, that, those countries that are coming against you. And then again in verse 13, for I, the Lord, you hold your hand, I say, do not fear, I will help you. You know, God has not abandoned them. And it's it's his promise to them. And it's, one of the things, as I read through this earlier, that, that do not fear, don't be afraid. I mean, God is there. And you know, there's so many times in our lives that are uncertain that, you know, we, I mean, the future is bleak looking. You know, we're, how are we going to get through this situation? You know, and and it, it, it happens to us as we're growing up in our youth and as we, you know, begin our adult lives and as we you know, get married as our, as our parents, you know, pass away as different things happen in, in life. You know, it, how are we going to get through this? This is a change. This is different. But God, through all of that, all of it, he says, you know, I will help you. I will be with you. And then again, verse 14, do not fear, you worm, Jacob, you insect, Israel. I mean, a worm, an insect, they're, you know, not worth very much, pretty lowly beings, but God says, I will help you. You know, I will make you a threshing sledge. You know, you're, you're going to be a mighty nation again. And um, just goes on with those promises. Um, in verse 23 and 24, you know, it's tell us what is to come, that we may know that you are God's do good or no harm that we may be afraid, terrified, that you indeed are nothing and your work is nothing. You know, these pagan nations, you know, it's Israel is saying, you know, we don't, these pagan nations are nothing compared to God. You know, God, I mean, they can't stand against God at all that way. Um, and as we get into verse 42 again, it's uh, God saying, here is my servant, my chosen. 
I have chosen you my, in, in you my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth the nations. You know, and and talking about his, you know, the the nation of Israel. It also may be a, a, a kind of a hint to the Savior, Jesus coming. You know, he will not cry or lift his voice or make it heard on the street. A bruised reed he will not break. And, you know, so there's, again, this um, the servant, the light of the nations, the, the, the promise of, of a bright and promising future, a promise of a promising future. How's that? He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And then verse 5, thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens, stretched them out who spread the earth upon it. He says, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. You know, I've given a covenant to the people. And again, it's that promise from God that he has chosen this nation of Israel, Israel, these rowdy and rebellious and sinful people that just continue to not listen, continue to be wayward and continue to be led astray by foreign nations and worship false gods. And, you know, there are a lot of people just kind of like us, you know, and we have struggles in life and so many questions and, and different things that way. In verse 12, 13, uh, says, The Lord goes forth like a soldier, like a warrior. He stirs up fury. He shouts out. He shouts aloud and shows himself against his, shows him, himself mighty against his foes. So this is, again, good news for the Israelites that, that God will come against Babylon, that he will show that he is a mighty God, a mighty warrior, and, and a faithful as well, you know, that, that he has the power to do this. And, and again, verse 17, they shall turn back and utterly be put to shame, those who trust in carved images. These pagans who are worshiping idols and false gods have no no chance to stand against God, and and not only that, but when we get into like verse twenty two and twenty three, it's you know that Israel is is blind to the ways of God. Israel just can't see how God is going to do all this, and they, you know, and he asks, "Who among you will give heed? Who will attend and listen? Who gave up Jacob to the spoiler?" You know, and. And it's, it's just, I mean, Israel just can't, you know, they don't open their eyes. They, they, can't, they can't see and understand and, and trust how, how uh, faithful God is to them in, and, you know, how, how God has led them in the past. Um, chapter 43, these first few verses of chapter 43, I, I, I really love these, like one through seven. Uh, and especially, well, it's, you know, but now thus says the Lord, he created you, he who formed you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through a fire, you will not be burned and the flame will not consume you because I am the Lord your God. Or my Bible says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia in exchange for you. And so, I, you know, I gave Egypt as your ransom. When, when God led the people out of Israel, when Moses did, by God's grace, you know, they were given as his ransom for his people. And then uh, verse 5, do not fear, for I am with you. Again, that do not fear, I mean, it, it comes up so many times in these verses, the chapters in Isaiah. I will say to the north, give them up to the south, you know, hold them in honor. But I, I, I skipped over verse four, and this is one of my favorite verses. And, and I've shared, like I said, this is a favorite passage of mine. I've read it many times to, to uh, you know, in people's homes, and hospital rooms and settings and different things. But verse four, because you are precious in my sight and I love you. I mean, these are God's words directly directly at each and every one of us you are precious in my sight and honored and i love you and you know if all we focus on is i love you but you are precious in my sight you are honored i i treasure you is what god is saying here and and this this verse 
in our chapter 43 is, you know, God is just telling his people of Israel how much they mean to him. You know, he says, verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed and made, you know, these are the people I'm talking about. Everyone that I have formed and made. Verse 10, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, so that you may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed. Verse 11, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. You know, and I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other gods before me, basically. Um, verse 19, I'm about to do a new thing. Promise again to Israel for uh, salvation. And then just to end with for today, verse 25 of chapter 43, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. He doesn't do it for our sake. He does it for his sake so that we might know that his righteousness is given to us because of him. I blot out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. And, and what a promise. I blot out your transgressions. I blot out your sins and I will remember them no more. You know, we're, we are made righteous by God himself. May you have a blessed Saturday.